Power in a Uniform, the Stanford Prison Experiment. It started as a simple simulation. In 1971, psychologist Philip Zimbardo recruited college students to role play prisoners and guards in a mock prison at Stanford University. But within just six days, things spiraled out of control. The guards became abusive. The prisoners broke down emotionally. And Zimbardo, who was acting as the prison superintendent, failed to intervene until an outsider pointed out how unethical it had become. Zimbardo's decision to end the study early, after only six days instead of the planned two weeks, was due to concerns from fellow psychologist Christina Maslach, who was shocked by what she saw. It was a critical moment that highlighted how even researchers can become desensitized to unethical behavior in high-control environments. This experiment became one of the most controversial in psychology, showing how quickly ordinary people can internalize and conform to roles of authority or submission. Obedience to Authority, the Milgram Experiment. In 1961, Stanley Milgram wanted to understand how ordinary people could commit atrocities during the Holocaust. So he designed an experiment where participants were instructed to administer electric shocks to another person when they got questions wrong. The shocks weren't real, but the participants didn't know that. Despite hearing screams and protests from the learner in the next room, many participants continued giving shocks just because a man in a lab coat told them to. The final voltage switch was labeled triple X. Over 60% of people went all the way. The takeaway? When under pressure from an authority figure, most people will follow orders, even if it means hurting someone else. The experiment sparked global debate about personal responsibility and blind obedience. Conditioning Fear, the Little Albert Experiment. Back in 1920, John B. Watson and Rosalie Rayner conducted one of psychology's most ethically troubling experiments. They introduced a nine-month-old baby, known as Little Albert, to various objects, like a white rat. At first, he wasn't afraid, but when the researchers began pairing the rat with a loud, startling noise, Albert started crying at the sight of the rat alone. Eventually, he showed fear toward other white, fluffy objects, rabbits, dogs, even Santa Claus masks. This was a demonstration of classical conditioning, inspired by Pavlov's work with dogs. It showed how emotions like fear could be learned, but critics later condemned the lack of informed consent and questioned what happened to Albert afterward. His true identity was only discovered decades later. Peer Pressure, the Ash Conformity Study. Imagine sitting in a room with seven strangers who all confidently give the same wrong answer to a basic visual question. Do you stick with your own eyes or trust the crowd? That was Solomon Ash's goal in the 1950s. Participants had to compare the lengths of lines. The answer was obvious, but when everyone else in the room, secretly actors, gave the wrong answer, a third of the participants went along. It wasn't just peer pressure. Ash later discovered that even when people suspected the group was wrong, they often doubted their own judgment. The study uncovered the immense power of social conformity and how easily we can be swayed by a crowd. Monkey Comfort, the Harlow Attachment Experiments. During the 1950s and 60s, psychologist Harry Harlow explored the nature of love and bonding using rhesus monkeys. He separated infant monkeys from their biological mothers and offered them two surrogates, one made of wire that held a milk bottle and another made of soft cloth with no food. The results were striking. The monkeys clung to the cloth mother for hours, only visiting the wire one briefly to feed. When scared, they always ran to the cloth figure. Harlow's work defied the dominant belief that attachment was based on food. It demonstrated that emotional security, touch, warmth, comfort, played a crucial role in psychological development. Unfortunately, many of Harlow's later experiments involving isolation were also deeply controversial for the distress they caused. Observational Learning, the Bobo Doll Experiment. In 1961, Albert Bandura set up an experiment to see if children could learn aggression simply by watching others. Children observed an adult hitting, punching, and yelling at a Bobo doll. Later, when placed in a room with the same doll, many of the kids copied the aggressive behavior, and some went even further. They invented new ways to hit the doll. Some even picked up toy weapons. Bandura concluded that children don't need to be taught directly. Just watching someone else is often enough. The Bobo doll experiment introduced the world to social learning theory. It showed that behaviors, especially violent ones, can spread through observation, setting off debates that continue today around violent media and video games. 
Group Conflict, The Robber's Cave Experiment. Muzaffar Sheriff's 1954 field study was like a real-life Lord of the Flies. He brought two groups of 11-year-old boys to Robber's Cave State Park in Oklahoma. The boys didn't know they were part of an experiment. Initially, the groups bonded separately, creating flags, nicknames, and rituals. Then came the competition, tug of war, baseball games, and treasure hunts. Hostility flared. They raided cabins, burned each other's flags, and refused to eat in the same room. But then Sheriff introduced problems that required teamwork, like fixing the camp's water supply. Gradually, cooperation replaced conflict. The takeaway? Intergroup conflict can be resolved, but only when both sides work toward a common goal. Willpower and success, the marshmallow test. The famous marshmallow test, first run by Walter Mischel in the early 1970s, measured young children's ability to delay gratification. They were offered a marshmallow, cookie, or pretzel stick, whichever they liked most. They could eat it now or wait 15 minutes and get two. Some children stared at the treat, distracted themselves, or even covered their eyes. About a third made it to the end. Follow-ups decades later suggested that those who delayed gratification tended to perform better in school, have healthier relationships, and avoid risky behavior. However, later research showed the results were influenced by family background, parenting, and socioeconomic status. Still, it sparked lasting interest in willpower and impulse control, traits linked to success and resilience. Learned helplessness, Seligman's dog experiment. In the late 1960s, Martin Seligman conducted a pivotal study on how animals and people respond to failure. Dogs were placed in a harness and given mild shocks they couldn't escape. Later, when the barrier was removed, they didn't even try to flee. They had learned helplessness, the belief that nothing they did could change their situation. When applied to humans, this concept helped explain depression, burnout, and trauma. Seligman later shifted his research to positive psychology, focusing on optimism and resilience. But the learned helplessness study remains a sobering reminder of how our experiences can shape our will to act. False Memories, the Lost in the Mall Study. Memory feels solid, but it's not. In the 1990s, psychologist Elizabeth Loftus showed just how malleable it can be. She asked participants to recall real childhood memories and then slipped in a fake one, being lost in a mall. Over 30% of people recalled the fake event in vivid detail. Some added extra features, like the color of the store or who found them. The study revealed how easy it is to implant false memories. It raised ethical and legal concerns, especially around courtroom testimonies and recovered memories. Loftus became a key expert in high-profile trials, challenging how much we should trust our recollections. These experiments changed how we understand the human mind, but they also raised ethical questions we still wrestle with today. If you learned something new or want more deep dives like this, Leave a comment below and tell us which one fascinated or disturbed you the most.